welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clements, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general advice or mentorship, you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the motivation, the strategies, and the support you need to become the very best Lone Recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, have you heard this one before? People who like you will talk to you, but people who trust you will buy from you. Really, really powerful sentiment I heard from uh, a, a um, business development uh, trainer the other week, Charmaine. You would have seen me post something about that on my LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. She's brilliant, absolute brilliant facilitator, and it will be in this episode links to her. If you're a recruitment agency or someone who just wants to sharpen their skills in sales, not with a recruitment bent, just sales in general, unbelievable. She was unbelievable. But she, one of the concepts she gave us was that People will talk to people they like, but people will buy from people they trust. And it really, really sunk home for me because how often do you look around your office or you've worked with recruiters in the past who just seem to always have really lovely conversations with people? Oh, they're always coming back going, oh, such and such client is so lovely. And, you know, they kind of had this level of like authenticity and like, you know, lovey, lovey with their clients, but they're not actually good billers, right? They're not actually good billers. No. There could be a number of reasons for that. But in the context of, of what we're saying here is that maybe they're not trusted. Maybe they're a bit too fluffy. Maybe they're, they're a bit too nice. Maybe not killer enough. And and on the flip side, when you see people who are very good at making sales, they're typically not sleazy. They're typically not slimy because those people do not last in our industry. They tend to sort of market hop, I would I would think. Um, but but recruiters who you know are trustworthy, who just give great advice, who stick to their word, do all the right things, they're the ones making the sales because clients feel a level of trust with them. So if you can just ground this logic in your mind for a moment, people who like you will talk to you, people who trust you will buy from you. I mean, the, the secret sauce there is if you can get both sides of the equation, but just ask yourself quickly, I've done this episode. I've done this um, activity in the office here, and it was really interesting. Are you someone that people like, or are you someone that people trust? And here is your opportunity for growth. Okay, now I think most people are likable if they're in recruitment because you're typically someone who wants to be on the phone and talk. So if that is the case, but you're not making sales, you need to hone in on, okay, maybe I'm not trustworthy enough. Maybe I'm a bit too jovial or whatever. And we're going to go into today's episode about how we can build the trust side of things. I think if you're someone who does make a lot of sales and you are someone that you know is trustworthy, gives great advice, you've been around for a long time, maybe you're too clini- um, too transactional. Maybe, maybe you're, yes, you're making placements, but maybe... If we can soften some of those people skills a little bit, can we warm you up a little bit and start having a few more conversations, maybe a few face-to-face meetings and, and get the talking part up? There's always magic in the talk as well, right? Because when you get a brief, great, but when you get a long brief you're in a room with someone for a long period of time, it's that extra five minutes where the gold comes. So if you can open them up because they like you and you're already trustworthy and you're making a lot of placements with them, you're probably going to elevate your sales as well. But look, I think... I think here are my red hot tips. I want to give you some tips on the trust side of things because I think a lot of people are going to have the the likability in the talks part, but how do we build the trust? And you probably already have a million answers for that, but I'm going to give you a, four or five things here that you can really go back now and think, am I doing these things well to build trust? So the first thing would be, my advice to anyone, stop hopping from one market to another. I just see so many recruiters, six months here, six months there, six months... How on earth do you build any credibility? How on earth do you build any sort of like expertise in a market if you keep moving? Maybe your expertise is recruitment. Maybe it's it's short term contracts. Fine, I get that. But for the for the large part of it, recruiters should stick to a lane, get really deep in what they know. It doesn't matter what you're recruiting. The the longer you stick around and the deeper you go, the better you're going to get and the more trusted you're going to become because you can lean on your expertise in time in that market. Second one, such a simple one. Your mum would have told you this: deliver on what you say, say what you do, what you say you're going to do. It, it, it's so simple. But you know what? How many people say yes? I've got the brief. I'm going to go find someone and just disappear. How often do you ghost a client? When was the last time you ghosted a client? I bet you it was last week. Have you got a brief at the moment that was given to you a month ago? That's ghosting a client. Go and update them. Tell them you haven't been able to find anyone. Tell them 
you've been away. Tell them you got sick. Tell them you haven't worked on it. Tell them something that's the truth. And I think they even though it might feel painful and awkward, that is starting to build some trust. Because I have clients say to me, do you know why I like working with you, Brett, other than when you deliver? You tell me when you can't deliver. You tell me when you're fucking up. You tell me when you're behind. You just keep me up to date. I like that because I can then... I can get them, you know, progress, you know, uh, this end and, and advise internally here what's happening. So I've taken a lot of that on board. And I think when you realise your clients do actually appreciate you saying I'm behind or haven't got to that yet or we're, we're just getting onto that now, think of any service you get. If, let's say you call a plumber. Let's say you, you're you building a house and you need to buy some windows. Like if you buy them and then three weeks later they still haven't arrived and your expectation was that they'd be there almost immediately, if they called and said, hey, you're in the line, you're about a week away – Oh, okay, thanks for the update. It's annoying, but at least you know. Just knowing where you stand is all that client wants, right? So let's deliver on what we say and let's give some updates as we go. Um, the third one is, again, these are all obvious, right? But these are things are, are you doing these? You've got to ask yourself, am I doing this now? Have you got reviews? Are you using Sourcer? Are you using LinkedIn recommendations? Have you like? I, do you need Google um, reviews? What reviews are available to you in your setup, your business or your own business or working for an agency? What reviews can you get more of? Because reviews are a thing called social proof, right? When when you say you're good, well, you're just talking up yourself. But when someone else says you're good, oh, we, we tend to trust them more because um, for whatever reason, social proof will prove, you know, and the more you have, the more reviews you have, the more proof there is that you've been doing a great job, okay? So I would be Simple one, go and get some reviews. It's a great way to build social proof and trust. Um, the fourth one, if you want to be building trust to therefore you know, get more buying action from your clients, is give expert advice. Now, the simplest way to do this is using Talent Insights on LinkedIn, right? I've been going to meetings of late with the Talent Insights tool prepared and just saying, hey, look, I know we're talking about XYZ Brief. I just prepared a file here to just look what the hiring demand is in this area, in this expertise. It's tough. It's actually okay. Let's zoom out. We can see pockets of, of available talent like up here and down there. That Can we pull them? Can we tap into them? Could we have them work remotely? They're going to be easy to get. Giving them an overlay of what the market's at that's unbiased to what you're doing um, and it's not about your ads or your activities. It's actually just data from LinkedIn really helps justify how you're performing. So when you can go in there and go, look how tight this is, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. I'll let you know if we get anything from it. You know, that's another way of building trust because they go, Shit, this guy's thorough. This person's thorough. They're, they're using data. It's not just opinion. Like people just, yeah, they want to know that they're in good hands. And sometimes using tools like that can be really, really useful. Um, the last one, which is such a simple one, and again, you know this one, but get super active on LinkedIn. Experts aren't typically the, the smartest person in the room. They're the most relevant person in the room. They're the most, um, most seen person in the room. So what I mean by that is if you take like Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is phenomenal at what he does, no doubt about that, but he's not a trained psychologist. And that's, that's where people go, oh, but Tony Robbins isn't a trained psychologist. There is zero doubts, however, in everyone's mind that he has helped millions upon millions of people and has been one of the most inspirational people of our generation. No doubts, right? So he's a great example of he's not the smartest expert in the room, but he has marketed himself well um, and he's shown up time and time again and people keep seeing him time and time again, saying right things, commenting, adding value, whatever, and all of a sudden his stocks rise. So getting active on LinkedIn as a recruiter is exactly the same as that. Tony Robbins effect, we'll call it. Um, in that, if you've got a market that you're recruiting and you're just commenting daily with, with your network, just commenting, that's great, liking it, adding value, whatever, they just see you. They're not, they're not in any one of those things going to turn around and go, here's all my business, you're the best person in the world. But over time, it compounds. Over time, that showing up, that showing up, that showing up, and posting your own content and engaging with that audience. As, as, as simple as this sounds or as daunting as this sounds, um, it doesn't matter what you think, it works. It works for a reason. You're, you're being seen by your audience. So you get to a point where you might be reaching out to candidates on LinkedIn and they say, oh, I've been watching all your posts. They're fantastic. Oh, I've, been, I've seen a lot of your posts. 
we're living in an age where trust is is um what's the word not trust but like people are so conscious of being scammed right how often do you get text messages from scammers and that's starting to look pretty legit right um, or how often do you get an email with a link or, or, or whatever? Like someone is daily trying to scam you, call you, email you, text you, whatever. And recruiters, if we if we don't have our if we don't have our social proof up, if we don't have our activities up. If people can't see us and we're not visible day to day, when we reach out to them to say, "Hey, I want to talk to you about this job," they're going to have their their guards up, thinking, "Is this a scam?" Okay, so it's really important that you prove to people before you transact and interact with them that. It is not a scam. So again, another way to, to preempt and build trust before you even need to ask them for anything. So I'm going to end that episode with what we started with, which is if people like you, they will talk to you. But if people trust you, they will buy from you, okay? And hopefully I've given you some, some just some ideas for today. What can we build our trust with today? Is it, is it am I going to have to stop hopping around from market to market? Um, do I have to deliver more on what I say I'm going to do? Am I going to follow up with clients even though I haven't done anything in the last month with them? What do I need to do to build trust there? Do I need to go out now and just get some reviews? Have I made like all these placements over the last 12 months and not sent out any review requests? Go and do them. <clears throat> just spend two hours smashing out review requests and you'll probably get 20 back and then all of a sudden you got 20 more reviews than you had yesterday. Well done. Um, are you using Talent Insights to give expert advice to your clients and your candidates? Are you actually using the data to go, look how challenging this is or look how easy this actually is. This, this can't be too difficult or whatever, however you want to use it, just having the data in a room is going to make you look elevated. Um, and then just getting active on LinkedIn, it's, you know, uh, commenting, posting, engaging with your audience. That is going to mean when you reach out to either a client to prospect for work or a candidate to pull them out for a job, they're already going to, they're already going to know who you are. Okay, so that's all I have time for you today. If you've got anything out of it, please like, share, subscribe. As you know, helps us grow. Don't just wash over this. As always, have an amazing day. May all your deals come true.